It's not just mine. His or her house. This is our house. Hello, everyone. My name is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends. And I want to thank everybody that supports my show. I want to thank BronxNet. I want to thank everybody that actually tunes in and watches my show. And in the House of the Legends today, I have a house music artist. And I, I bring to you Vanessa L. Smith. Hey, Vanessa. Hi. How you doing? Very good, very good. It's been a beautiful summer so far. We're almost done with it so fast, but um, well, you know, it, it, the, the leaves have to fall, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'll take it as long as I'm here to see it. Okay, so welcome to my show, The Legends. So, we want to know the viewers, we want to know, you know, actually, um, in the beginning of, of when you actually started singing, were you were a kid, were you were a teenager, or somebody inspired you, or you just woke up one day and grabbed the mic and said, well, hey, I'm going to belt some notes out? I was a kid who sang under my covers, and I didn't know that my father was listening. I must have been around eight years old singing, wishing on a star, you know, like that kind of stuff. I loved songs like that by Rolls Royce and the Beautiful Voices. Mm -hmm. I love the sentiment of the song <clears throat> at that time. So my father brought me to a um, talent show when I was a small girl and I froze not one hiccup out of my mouth, but I never forgot that. Um, he heard something in me that um, I guess as a father, as a parent, he knew that I probably wanted to sing somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. um, that never happened um, for years to come after the eight year old um, push onto the stage and going music. Um, <laughs> but then after that talent show, that stayed with me a lifetime. Um, and uh, then years went on and I ended up going to Baltimore uh, to an event and house music event um, because I love music and I started going to house music events as an adult. So in 2014, I met um, Veronica and uh, Speedy uh, Jackson, Utopia, you know her as Utopia and DJ Speedy Jackson. And um, in 2014, I was brave enough to step into the studio with Joseph Joe Flame from D Sharp Records to write up my first song, my very first song in 2014 called Second Chance on Love, um, as well as Heaven. So. The way my very first song went, um, Second Chance on Love, mm -hmm. 2014, as I recorded it for the first time and, you know, I didn't have any vocal technique or anything like that. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just singing a song okay. that I could and writing a song from my heart out and mm -hmm. didn't have any idea what song structure was or anything. I had so much to learn, but I was brave enough to do it um, by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. um, we managed to do a first run a recording of Second Chance on Love. And um, Joe said, you know, I think you could do better. We're going to we're not going to release this one because it's not um, I'm not in love with the first recording. You need to go to a vocal coach, right. a vocal technique and mm -hmm. then come back and we'll, re we'll do the song from the top. Right. So I um, he introduced me to Carl Brister and in 2014, Carl Brister is a vocal coach. Mm -hmm. and um, I worked with Carl Brister to learn how to breathe. Um, and I discovered there was some physical things that I needed to address. I didn't realize there was all that was involved in singing. Right. Um, and breathing is very important. And I discovered through music that I had some real health issues that I had to address. Mm -hmm. so I wasn't able to oxygenate. And um, I could hear myself struggling to breathe, struggling for oxygen. Um, I would see stars before my eyes hitting certain notes and I couldn't hold them. Right. Um, and that that went on, I you know, for a while. And um, I got scared after um, learning about all of the things that were involved in just singing a song. So mm -hmm. I sat still for three months after that. Wow. And Bill called me and said, are you ready yet? Because uh, <laughs> I certainly wasn't going to call him back after scaring myself out of the first experience. Right. So Joe said, you know, are you ready yet after 
three months of sitting and lamenting and crying and feeling mm -hmm. sorry for myself, we finally recorded Second Chance on Love. Right. And it was um, my first, it was a pretty good stab at my first song, Check Second Chance on Love. Um, back then I was Vanessa L. Jones. Uh, so now I'm um, Vanessa Smith. And um, and so you can find it. I'm just saying my name. Um, it was released under Vanessa L. Jones, okay. just so that it can you can discover the song. Um, mm -hmm. After that came Heaven, and uh, Heaven was released on Face the Bass Records, uh, and that's uh, Veronica and um, and Speedy's label. The Face the Bass Records um, was where Heaven, my second song in 2014, was released. Right. Like heaven. I want to be like heaven. So it was my second song. And then um, I sat for a, a, I did a couple of performances, again, pushed out on stage. Right. But as an adult, you know, I was, got used to pushing past the fear a little more. Right. I was pushed out on stage to sing Second Chance on Love. And I did it. Um, and I said, I can do this if I could just get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's from 2014 to 2016. I just spent that time getting used to looking at an audience and getting used to projecting my voice and dealing with the health issue um, to get myself better oxygenated. My 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 question to you is: um, Have you have you ever went to a club and really hear your tracks being banged out? Yes, I, I I'm stealthy. So tell me about um, a feel. Tell me about the feeling behind that. I'm stealthy. Um, so I sat in the back of some clubs with a big old hat on and some sunglasses. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, you kind of want a natural organic response from people. Right. When you're when the DJ is kind enough to break your record. Right. So in, in order to get the truth, I wanted to be stealthy about it. And so I was sitting in the coffee cave at the time in Newark. Um, right. John ran that coffee cave. I sit there in the back and hunch down and, you know, hope for the best, you know, hope mm -hmm. that my songs were received um, well. And it felt amazing. Okay. It felt amazing. At that time, um, I was getting to know more and more people um, in the music scene. So um, it was nice to hear that mm -hmm. just on the internet shows and everything as, as DJs. Right starting to roll their shows out. They would give me that and, you know, play my songs there. And, and I'd sit back and see how they were received. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was, my songs tend to be a little bit different because mm -hmm. um, I shoot from the gut, you know. You know, um, when you're listening in the club and you listen to yourself, does it, do you evaluate it to the point where you feel you can do something a little bit better to give it some more highlight and fidelity? You ever thought about that? Um, no. Uh, you know, I release it. I, okay. I'm, I'm kinder to myself to date. Okay. Uh, you know, I think I was more harsh then. You know, I could do this better. I could do that better. Um, and there was even a small period of time where I wouldn't listen to the songs after they were, were released because okay. I would, I did start to punish myself. But now, when I listen to my songs now, there's, I can hear the growth. In right. My skill, the growth in the people that I work with, the producers, the musicianship. Mm -hmm. Um, as I got to know different musicians and mm -hmm. they were also growing. I think what made this a kinder journey for me was well, that- Well, Vanessa, um, hold, were... hold that thought. We're going to be right back. And oh. our viewers, we're going to listen to one of her tracks right now. And um, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay. Stay for the love of house. The dynamic the soul sounds of for the love DJ of Tyrone Lowe. DJ Tyrone Low. Dynamic soul sounds of DJ Tyrone Low. Thank you. 
Fun people in the house tonight. This is our house. Hey, we're back. This is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends, and I have the fabulous Vanessa L. Smith in the house. Hey, Vanessa. Hi. You know, um, in your in your in your singing career, have you ever just considered just singing other gyres instead of house? I um, definitely consider jazz. Okay, you know, that's a whole different technique that I'd have to really um, learn and master. And definitely R and B, mm-hmm. rhythm and blues. I definitely okay, um, rhythm and blues. And besides that, taking your uh, your career to different heights. You ever considered acting, things like that, or have no. you ever? No. But I, I would do it. I would do it. You know what? That's I mean, not, sometimes not you got to go outside the box and stuff like that because Listen, you have you to. Have you have to look. That let me lead a script and read a script. I'll try. Yeah, because um, you have to look. You know, you have to pizzazz, and I feel that'd be something that you might just actually consider. I mean, that's my point of view. You know, yeah. um, sometimes you have that person look on the inside, on the outside looking in, and they can see features and quality, you know, yeah. and stuff. So let's talk about your new track, uh, Vanessa, oh, and how did it come about? And let um, there be sun. Yes, let there be sun. Mm-hmm. You know, I close my eyes and I wonder, you know, having gone this journey um, this far in life, mm-hmm. you know, there have been songs that have been very unkind as far as love, even crass. So I wanted to give the world a song that spoke very endearingly, again, to leave, um, to put a more endearing um, spotlight on love and expression of love, um, the expression of a smile and um, how it affects me is where that came from. I saw this handsome guy that had a beautiful smile and it inspired me. I was out at a party and just saw a smile. You know, some people smile from their spirits, from right. their souls. And I can appreciate that. I'm one that look, I look at people, I look at them deeply. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I can appreciate when someone has a soulful smile and I got a whole song from that. Um, wow. I closed my eyes and imagined what I would say if I had the guts to actually um, say anything. I never saw the guy again. Mm-hmm. But okay, his smile will be with me forever. Okay. You know, so that's where I was inspired by that smile. Yeah, that's kind of cool that you actually take certain little things like that and you engross them into something that's really, mm-hmm. really big, you know. Um, and so. Tell um, let's talk about some of the places that you have performed during your craft, and let the viewers know about that. And um, also let them know that is if anything that you actually had to do again from the beginning of your career to now, what would that actually be? I don't think I'd do anything again because what I did led me to where I'm at now. Okay. So to change that journey would have probably affected where I'm at now. And I love where I'm at now. Um, and that's a very independent place. Um, I learned, I'm a fast learner. So some things I learned and retained, some things I just put in my other file. Right. Um, but no, I wouldn't do anything differently. Um, there were some tough, tough times, crying points. You know, that that's life. Right. You know, Put on your big girl drawers and you move on and you you learn from it. Everything is a learning experience for me. Um, what was the original question, though? <laughs> we want to talk about some of the live performances that you yeah, have done, um, the the places cave. that you've been. Now, the Coffee Cave gave me my first start okay. um, at uh, performing. I've performed there several times, several outdoor events, the latest one being Newark's Block Party um, with Deuce Martinez and that crew. Right. Um, 
Coney Island, uh, grace the boardwalk uh, in the heat, and all of these people from the big circle and DJ Steve Bass and all of those guys gave me okay. the mic and I sang, you know. So it was um, a lot more outdoor events than indoor events. Okay. Um, I performed that. So, you know, not too much. I didn't want to overbook myself because okay. I was so right, you know, so run a label now. So. So with, uh, where do you actually want to go with this? Um, are you? Oh, let's more, talk about the let's talk more. about the picture that you actually want to actually look at yourself. You know, where do you really want to be at? And you know, what's it going to take? What do you think is going to take you to get there? Okay, so where I want to be at is to really to protect my independence as an artist. Okay. To, it's important for me to be able to continue to write what I want to write without that being manipulated too much by outside forces. Right now, what you're getting from me is a very organic, very um, untouched um, written word from my soul, expressions untouched from my soul. Um, I'm investing a lot because I want to to really retain my independence as an artist. Right. I'm one of those people that watched, you know, the 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 behind the musics and all of the sob stories of artists who in the end really all they ever wanted was their independence. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to protect that. So and I'm as a label, I want to grow my song catalog. I want to clean up the narrative when mm -hmm. it comes to black love. And the okay. way men, when the way men and women relate to one another, that matters to me. Um, it matters. My my people have been through a special journey. Mm -hmm. And so we have some healing to do. Right. I think, I think my blessing, my place in that, in this world, in this life, is to help heal that mm -hmm. through song, through the words that I use in song. As a natural woman, I have to I've healed myself right writing songs and expressing songs and closing my eyes and reimagining from a very innocent place what it would mean to fall in love to express love and not hold back right um, we need to get there again and we need to really do it with a sense of um of uh i don't want to say class you know leave something to the imagination make it romantic again make it Make, I want to make love romantic again through song, um, to heal our spirits through song. Um, so much ado about love. I have some other things on my mind that I want to write and release. I have a protest song called Impeached. Oh, um, really? <laughs> yes, I have a protest song called Impeached. Okay, um, now. And I released that over on Bandcamp because I was afraid to turn it out to, you know, the other stores would bounce it back and say not only no, but heck no. Right. You know, it's kind of that um, kind of song where, you know, I'm really uh, getting at, you know, my druthers about that last presidency. And right. I, I can't believe in our lifetime we had experienced something like that, but not for nothing. It made us take a better, deeper look at ourselves mm -hmm. for real. The good, the bad, and the ugly underbelly of what's really going on and what it right. means to be black. So you didn't you didn't mean to make it political or anything, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, really? Absolutely. Wow, I okay. Hey, well, I haven't heard the song, so but I, I'm, de I'm definitely going to get into it. You know? And I did the whole video. Um, Dan Shiver, um, did, uh, he encouraged me to do a video to explain what in, what was behind Impeach. Right, okay. So I did a whole video that is also on Bandcamp called Behind Impeached. Okay. And so you can go on Bandcamp. I forgot to give you the link um, to that. But a Vanessa L. Smith on Bandcamp, you can find me very easily. Okay. And, and the video to Impeached. Um, so that was my song um, with that. And then I did a uh, Reset. Um, reset was at the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, reset was just about re getting control of my anxiety, really, and cutting out all of the noise and people and their opinions and right. the, you know, the druthers of social media can pull your mood down. And oh, most definitely, yes. Noise. Reset was another healing song. I'm taking my, my control of my what I intake back. I'm closing, covering my ears, and I need to reset back off from the social media and all the noise and all the opinions, unwarranted and warranted. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take my mind back 
and I'm going to heal. So that's what reset was about because I was feeling overwhelmed by all of the opinions mm. and people arguing. You know, I wouldn't chime in. I would eavesdrop on some things that bothered my soul. Right. So I said, let me push back from this and give myself a time out um, and reset. And I feel like others could relate to that same feeling. Mm -hmm. Any shout outs? You know, anybody oh, that you want to yeah. acknowledge? If you got a I want to first acknowledge Joseph Joe Flame. Um, he gave yeah, me big up to Joe Flame. He's been yeah, on that show before, too. Dangerous. You know, you know very talented out. producer. You know, if he didn't give me a start, I wouldn't have had I wouldn't be sitting here now with any songs to talk about. Um, okay. and then I want to um give a shout out to um face to base records, you know, and Alan Speedy and Veronica Utopia, you know, you guys planted the seed and I went running with it. And then I want to give a shout out to um, the Black Knight, um, Charles McDougal. He released that. He is the man behind the Black Knight. Charles mm -hmm. McDougal taught me a lot. I was a student. Um, he really uh, brought me over the threshold of, you know, he really brought out vocally some things in me that were, he pushed me like no one else could, and it helped that he was kind. Right. Um, he he did it in a way where I didn't feel beat up. Um, and he saw that I was tough in a way. I'm, I'm kind of tough, <laughs> army strong, I'm an army girl too. But okay. um, he pushed me over the threshold as far as my vocal skill. So I wanna say thank you so much to him. And not only the vocals, he saw that I was willing to learn. And so he showed me some production things and set me up with the things I needed to buy hardware, software, what I should listen for when I'm listening to vocals, how to finesse the vocals, how to, right. what I should be listening to in, in, in musicianship and instrumentation, how to mix over the, it took years to get um, that and thousands, I mean, I imagine if I put a dollar amount on it, Charles, um, thousands of dollars worth of teaching is what he blessed me with. I mean, and I got the lesson, I realized the value of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a student, I learned, um, and he, uh, as a result of our relationship, the, the Black Knight and I, we released a whole bunch of music, a whole bunch of songs. No okay. better. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful tears. Whoa, beautiful tears. Well, you have a you have a you have a list there. But you know oh, what, Vanessa, I, um, I want to thank you so much for being on my show. And um, I love our conversations over the telephone. They're very inspiring and encouraging. But most of all, I thank you very much for being on my show, The Legends. And viewers, support this sister because she's really deep. You have to really listen to her and get into her and see actually where she's coming from. And this has been another TLO video production. And y'all stay tuned for another episode. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. <laughs>